Kriege. Hello, all of you Slimesters. Welcome to a bonus surprise episode of A Conversation With. And we have got uh, two guests who have been on the show before, and it's good to have them again. We have Scott Barber and Phil Moore. How you get? How you doing, guys? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Uh, it's good to be here again. Uh, you know, a, a little behind the scenes before we got going. Uh, some faces gone, some new faces in. But it seems like uh, still the same incredible team of, like, just outrageous folk you got there with you, man. It's great to be back. It's good to have you. It's great to have you. Thank you, man. All right. It's well, pleasure. you you all see who's here. But uh, now the question is, what are we going to talk about today? Because Scott had actually reached out to us and said that he and Phil are working on a project together. And hopefully by now you all have seen it. Because I know that Scott has started to share the trailer that he's got going around on social media. Uh, Scott, tell us what. What have, what's the new project that you have going? Yeah, the new project is Game Changers. Uh, it's about video games that change the game. So all sorts of retro classic video games, all the way from late 70s, early 80s, all the way through the 80s and 90s. You know, we got stuff like Tomb Raider and stuff like that on there. But then we also got stuff like Dragon's Lair and Centipede from the arcade, uh, arcade days. And me and Phil are kind of saying that it's like the movies that made us or 30 for 30, but about video games. So every episode, we will tell the story of a different video game. And as if that wasn't cool enough, Phil Moore is your host. So that's like, <laughs> who wouldn't want to see that? Right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, I got to tell you how, how this whole thing sort of started. Um, Scott actually reached out to me. And of course, as you already hit the fantastic thing with the uh, the orange years and and he and it was it was so encompassing and the research and and just at the story he, he told along the way was was incredible and i gotta be straight up before anybody starts hitting me up and coming at me um i think it was really cool that he reached out to me because i i'm not like a now i'm not like a guy on twitch that you can go find and i'm sitting up there doing my gaming thing i watch these folks i produced two seasons of a game show off of Twitch, it's now on Amazon Prime called Chasing the Crown. I mean, I work as a producer now. Uh, I've got, you know, kids. I've got a grandkid. And it's like, I don't have the time to do that. I'm not that guy. Speaking of grandkid, here she is. Hi, baby. I'm on the stage right now. <laughs> This is, this is, yeah, she, she said, Mario. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Nice to meet you. She's my one and nice only granddaughter. She's my, she's my granddaughter and born on my birthday. And Aww. right now, you're going to play video games, aren't you? Yeah, she's going to make a video. Okay, she's going to play Grab your tablet. Would you go back out and close the door while I finish this? All right? She's okay, going to go to the video zone. <laughs> she watches me actually they, they show nick arcane on paramount plus and the first thing yeah. she said was oh my gosh that looks really cool i said do, I, do you look funny she goes no but you're skinnier and where's your hair like my face <laughs> 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 the biggest thing for her is that I look like a shaved yak. That's the biggest thing for her. But, um, <laughs> Walk on all fours and everything. Was, <laughs> ah! <laughs> Hot pop. You're, you're funny, but come on. Why are you almost bald? Um, but but, but the, the reason why I was so happy that Scott called me was um, because of the uh, authenticity of like what I actually am. I am a guy that was back when the game was being changed in the world of video games. It was at the, it was, it was at the beginning of it. And um, the thing that was really different, like, like, let me put it this way. If we wanted to put a video game on like a show uh, that I was producing, we would have to go and like beg and plead because the video game world is huge. The markets are huge. The games are incredible. But back in the day, it was so new. I would be sitting at home, like right now, the doorbell would ring. I would go and open the door and the FedEx or the UPS guy would be there with a truckload of video games because they were begging us to put mm -hmm. their games on Nick Arcade. 
because yeah. they were all new. They were prototypes. There were things they were still trying to work out. And I realized at that particular time, I was on the precipice of something that was about to explode. It was when it was all happening and there were some incredible men and women that were working like crazy using their imaginations and doing things that we could not even comprehend would explode to the place it is now. And that's why when Scott asked me, I first, I told him, I was like, dude, you want me? Don't you want to get some somebody on Twitch? So like, he goes, no, it's you. It's about when it all happened and the folks that made it happen to get it where it was today. And I do have to humbly and, and thankfully feel like, yeah, I was around when that was going on. I was sort of a mouthpiece for this wacky little game show in which we had games on the air that you couldn't buy in your house yet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Scott, where did so, this- uh, So the I idea mean... of now, no, I'm sorry. I was just saying the idea of doing a, a show that looks at the people that created this industry mm -hmm. and being able, in my opinion, to, in a way, not only like be the, the mouthpiece of it, but you know, to say thank you to them. I mean, I have a fair, I have a beautiful career that I'm actually incredibly thankful for having, but it all started because some people that are much smarter than me stepped behind a desk and started coming up with these ideas and creating these games, which are now legendary and have now evolved into the place we are now. Wow. Yeah. Scott, where did this idea come from? You know, they always say, like, make make something that you would want to consume. <laughs> so it just seemed like a show I would want to watch. And then I thought about it. I was like, what would make me want to watch it even more? And I was like, if Phil Moore was on it. <laughs> it's a long shot. You know, I, I, I know Phil from the Orange years. We had talked. And so uh, I hit him up. And um, I just I, it was one of those things. I couldn't believe the idea hadn't already been done. You know, like there's the toys that made us, the movies that made us. There's things like that. But about video games uh, that just seemed something that it would have been done, but it really hasn't. There's certainly been docu-series that kind of work, work you through the timeline of video games, some really mm -hmm. good ones, but none where it's like every episode, um, you know, is a different game. Right. And, right. You know, yeah. you always think like, what, what's going to be different? Cause there's so many YouTubers, you know, like the uh, video game historian and stuff like that, that do mm -hmm. an amazing job already. Yeah. It's like, what what are you going to do that's different? What right. what what makes this different than what people can watch on YouTube? And I thought Phil, you know, I mean, to get to watch him, kind of meet these people and talk to these people, that's different than than watching a, a video that's kind of just like the history. It brought it to life, you know. Yeah, and and the yeah. idea of that itself, just the way that the certain games that change the face of video games, because like you said, the the, the video game historian, angry video game nerd, and mm -hmm. so many other uh youtubers they they would just talk about i mean th the broad history and sometimes they would get those oddball pieces that most people forget about and then their fun comedy rants and stuff like that but uh most places that i can think of I, like gosh i love the 80s and i love the 90s that was on mtv there was mm -hmm. a uh there was a documentary just on the et atari game <laughs> yes yeah uh, there, there was a documentary just on the Atari. There was a documentary on uh, Donkey Kong. Mm -hmm. uh, but I've never seen a documentary that's talked about this game had a huge influence. Here's how gaming was before. This is what it changed to when this came out until this game, which... Mm -hmm would be i'm assuming how that would flow this was what this game did and the next one to really change things up is this game which will be the next episode i'm assuming exactly exactly yeah i mean that that's really the idea i mean even something as simple as um uh, uh behind you you have mario the mm -hmm. idea of the scroll you know uh, before it was left and right and up and down and all of a sudden your world scrolled that is a game changer we take it for granted because for a lot of us, it's been around forever. But there was a moment in time in which it didn't exist yeah. at all. Right. It's, much, it's now, much like the Legend of Zelda one was like an overview and the second one was a side scroller. So they were just inventing it as they were going along. Yeah, exactly. And, and, now, and now when you bring in the cinematic as aspect, like I remember the first time I watched, I, I, the first time I played a video game in 
felt like I was watching a movie because of the cinematic cutscenes in it. Yeah. And I was like, the game started again. I was like, wait, hold up. Wait, can you bring that back? <laughs> you know? and, and then I realized, I mean, look, we're going to say this a lot and it's not just to promote the thing, but that was a game changer. It really was. Mm-hmm. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, I just saw something that's new and it never went away. Mm-hmm. You right. know, it, yeah. it, it just it just never went away. It, it And then everybody else built up. I like in the two list that we talked about how it's sort of like the movies that made us. I remember the first time I saw Toy Story 1. Mm. Oh, yeah. And I stopped yeah. and I went, and I stopped and I went, there goes 2D animation. You know? <laughs> and I know you've all heard Steven Spielberg talk about um, he had hired a group of people to do stop motion for the dinosaurs. But then somebody presented them this new technology called uh, uh, called the CGI, and he literally was look, talking to when he showed it to the stop motion people, and he's like, "Oh, I guess we're extinct." And he added that in the li- a line in the in the movie Jurassic Park, Jurassic Park, when Jeff Goldblum was like, "Hey, it looks like we're out of a job." He goes, "Don't you mean extinct?" That line <laughs> came from that. Those are moments where something happened, and forever rewrote how we view things or how we do things. And um, and I, I, I'm with Scott. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, not Scott. I'm, I'm with everybody here. We're looking at Scott going, yeah, why didn't anybody do this yet? It was, um, it was, it was it's a brilliant idea. And, uh, and I, I am absolutely honored that he asked me to, because honestly, I'm a huge fan. I mean, I, I started out saying how crazy busy I am with all this stuff. But when you take me back to my roots, if Scott, you know what you should do one day? You should put together a behind the scenes of when we got together at the video game museum yeah. in Texas. I happened to be there working for a a a, uh, a YouTube uh, influencer uh, uh, named Preston. He's a friend of Mr. Beast, and I was there working on content with him. And Scott was like, "I'm here. We got together." And it was almost like, "Phil, can you can you can you wrangle Phil because he's over there looking at all of the stuff." I mean, it was like <laughs> a giant. Pu- they had a Dreamcast there, y'all. They had a Power Glove there. <laughs> I, have, I have a Dreamcast upstairs in my son's room. Wow. <laughs> like It was like they're ready to get shooting on the on the thing, the promo that we have up. And I got to tell you, it took, it took everything. Duck Hunt. I'm like, like with the gun. Like, <laughs> yes. man, let me play. Let me play. <laughs> and he's like, Phil, you got, we got to do this. We only we only have the facility for a little bit, you know? Yeah, right. and, it's uh, for B-roll. It's for B-roll. <laughs> Just shoot it. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. We did that, yeah. <laughs> Such a huge fan. And it's not like I'm not a fan of what's now. But admittedly, I'm not 100% in it because of life and work and things. But when mm-hmm. you take me back to where it all began and I was there, um, a kid in a candy store. And so I, <laughs> I, I, I genuinely want to hear these stories. Mm-hmm. I generally, I, I, I genuinely want to know what was going on to get from where we are where it was to where we are today. I am the biggest old school analog cord connected to the system <laughs> yes. fanboy. Yes. Yes. So back yeah. in the day, were you just were you just the guy that was like the newest system? It's like you were never skeptical about it. You're like, I'm gonna buy that and I'm gonna play this. Like were you um, just okay. excited when it came out? Did you buy the okay, Sega CD? Too. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, this, I got I gotta say something here. I want everyone to know they're not coming off as pretentious. It was just a perk of the job, okay? Being the host of Nick Arcade meant I never had to buy a video game console <laughs> or game in the ni- the decade of the 90s. They nice. kept, The show was done, but they kept showing it in reruns. Some people didn't even know that they were looking at a rerun and we weren't in current production. And the video game fairy would ring my doorbell <laughs> and go, here, boom, here's some more stuff. Oh my God. So is your living room back then, right just here. like all the consoles just stacked yes. on top okay. of each other, L- wires L- going everywhere? <laughs> yes. Okay, so here's what. In the living room, we had a switcher. We had two game systems in the living room. My son at the time, he was... Uh, four or five years old and in his room he had two systems he wanted the um the the playstation one and he wanted the sega genesis and in another room we had um uh the old school 8-bit nintendo and we had the dreamcast and then we had a system in my office where we had uh inputs that we could connect up 
the game gear and we can oh, connect to the game and we can yeah. show it on the, the thing. And so gear. we had every room except my bedroom. <laughs> Gotta sleep somewhere. Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. We even had <laughs> little pockets in the bathroom where you could hang up and put your video game. So while you're sitting there, <laughs> you know, Game Boy while dog. you're sitting there, and thing, like, what do I feel like? Do I feel like Choplifter or do I feel like Zelda? You know, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to play oh, while, you're, while, you're, while you're squeezing it's, the It's juice? like my oh, own no. wine collection. It's like... <laughs> yeah. Instead of reading the shampoo bottle, you're reading the back of the cartridges. Would, yeah. would you pass me a... Would you pass me a two ply and a Pokemon <laughs> Red? <laughs> and a paper ball. Yes, yes, that's really good. Oh, that's fantastic! Uh, but that was my house, man. It was it was the best, best, best thing ever. I mean, and it was random. It was like you know, I the doorbell would just ring, and you look outside, and I'd like, did you order anything? No. Okay, well, it's the <laughs> video game fairy again. So it, it, it's kind of a cool little perk of the job. And it wasn't just me. The two gentlemen that created the show, uh, James Lathan and Karim Metef, and also the executive producer, Scott Fishman, they got the same treatment. So about four of us uh, just got got stuff sent to us. So cool. Um, and so, yeah. again, I was I, I was I, I was at the, at the museum with uh, with Scott. I was a big, giant kid. I mean, every time he turned around, it was like there was a moment where he and the camera guy were setting up stuff, and you could hear my voice echoing from a distance every two minutes. (laughs) (laughs) I would see something new. Oh! Uh, That that was old. Something new that was old. Something from my past that was there in that that place. So, uh, I I, man, what an honor uh, and a privilege it will be to be able to meet these people as as a fan and let them fear my ear holes with that goodness of how this all came about wow so it's are you crazy talking, are you talking to the software developers or how many people are you talking to in game changers like who all are you interested in, in hearing from yeah I think, uh, you know what I would say every and everybody. Uh, yeah. uh, one thing I've learned even about like from a production side, working as a as a as a television producer, um, everybody has a story to tell and everybody plays a part. We all have a tendency to look at the people that are sort of at the top or that mm-hmm. get uh, the the spotlight put on them. Um, but then you'll find out when you actually dig deep that the person that made the most iconic thing that stands out in your head that you're wearing on your t-shirt was somebody who just randomly came in from lunch and said, I spilled the thing on my shirt and it looks like a this. Why don't we yeah. design it like that? Mm-hmm. And that's, that's where the gold comes from. So yeah. I, I, Scott, you know, I, I'm, I'm saying any and everybody, every story, every yeah. story, everybody has a story to tell. Everybody's right. talents went into making this thing that we all love, everybody. Yeah, I think that's what makes it so interesting is, like you're saying, the stories you have, like, behind the scenes of the development of the game, groundbreaking new technology, just ideas going, but then you have the audience as well, right? People experiencing these games for the first time, how it changes their perspective of games, you know, going from 2D side scrollers to, you know, 3D in 64, Mm -hmm. you know, in PlayStation, it's it's the, the changing of the industry, the changing of how video games were even treated as a serious medium. Uh, as time went on, there's, there's so many stories. So I, I'm very interested to see, you know, from each game, wh- what the perspective was from the audience side all the way to behind the scenes of like what they were doing when they're like, hey, you know, let's let's try something new here. What would it be like if we introduce AI into games, right? What would it be like it, to have it, <laughs> NPCs think yeah. for themselves? Yeah, hey, look, it's like the Venom symbiote. Like who's really feeding who? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, they invent something, they create something, and then we, as fans playing the games, respond. We respond with our enthusiasm. We respond. We uh, we we respond with our 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 money, right. uh, and we respond with you know. Nowadays, we have all of these social media platforms where people would just blog a thing or two, uh, and and this is where they would then find out what people were reacting to and then they would they would then base the next thing they did based on what we did so they did something we reacted our reaction then inspires their next reaction and exactly, it's a symbiotic yeah. sort of existence yeah it's so interesting and it's it's so cool to see these stories so i'm looking forward to it yeah yeah well Scott, this is why we wanna, like, this, yeah. oh i'm sorry go ahead 
No, no, no. I was, I was going to say something to Scott. So you go right ahead and say something to Scott. <laughs> okay. But Scott, um, so what was your like ambition to, to get this thing moving? Like, were you also a video game fan and you wanted to get this information out there as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and really it was kind of, we wanted to make something that both uh, gamers, like really hardcore gamers would like, but also just nostalgia in general, people that are just kind of trying to satisfy both. I did this documentary, This Is Guar, about a band Guar that's very niche. And I, we wanted to make something that they're hardcore fans, which they have some hardcore fans, but then also just people who's, I, I would say people whose favorite musician is Garth Brooks <laughs> or something like that. You know? <laughs> and so that's what we're really, uh, yeah, wanting to do here. Yeah, of course, I'm a big 80s, 90s nostalgia. I love it all. Um, and just, you know, one thing that we really wanted to do is treat it like a, a, a real documentary where we really are hearing in the, I love it in the um, crowdfund video we have, Phil says, the people that put their blood, sweat and tears into it. It's a human story about people. It, it is fun facts and it is 80s, 90s, but it's also like stories of people that overcame incredible odds, you know, and did really cool things. Like we want you to fall in love with the characters. So I love and, that idea. and for them, it was a labor of love because look, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not going to say the past versus now it's an easier job to do, but when the technology is as, as infantile as it was back then, uh, when the abilities and capabilities and power that needed to do things weren't at the place that it is now, it was really like, again, that just blood, like uh, it's, it's, it, it's blood they put into it to try to make something work make something it's kind of like uh, again I, I like talking in analogies please forgive me but you know I do the same. Uh, it's a difference between yeah. it's a difference between like we want to make a spaceship in our next movie so somebody who is a talented person and has studied and has learned and put in a lot of work to create a cgi spaceship but when you go back to like say 1977 when that didn't exist and they still wanted to put a level of effect that looked like I believe that thing is there, it was harder for them because they didn't have some of the tools. I don't mean harder because uh, the people that now have it easy or it doesn't require the same level of talent. But 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 if but if you want me to take you down the street and I have a bicycle versus I have a car, one is going to be harder to do. Yeah. Yeah, very yeah. manual, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. One is going to be very, very much harder for me to do. I can do it. Uh, and if I do continue to do it, again, for the people that created this game, that means it was truly a labor of love. It's just and, an absolute labor of love. And I am assuming, because knowing how you've worked before and your other documentaries, that you have also reached out to, if not already had interviews with people who have... Put, ended up putting a lot of time and making into these games. Yeah, that's exactly it. We've been reaching out to people uh, right now. We have done a couple of interviews. We have a couple of interviews in the can, some good ones. Uh, and, um, you know, we, that was, you know, as far as who to reach out to, when we were kind of going through the list, it was like that, like, one, what's a game that did change the game? Like, what's the point of this? Mm -hmm. Two, does it have a good story? You know, is there something there that would be interesting to see on screen? Uh, three, are are we going to be able to get to them? You know, some some games were almost all Japanese, which that'd be great yeah. if we had an unlimited budget and maybe we'll be able to go over there with this. That'd be amazing. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, just who do we have access to and all of that kind of stuff. So um, that's why we kind of put a lot of games on our crowdfund. These are the types of games we want to do. Some of them we'll get to on this season. Some of them we'll get to on another season. Um, because, yeah, there's just so many factors into which which ones we uh, which ones we're able to do. Uh, and, and hopefully, um, just like I said before, the symbiotic relationship, uh, if, if we get, you know, when I say if, when we get this first season done and we, we see what connects with the audience, what they want to hear, what they want, what stories they want told. That they may come and say, "Hey, well, we liked episode two. Hey, did you know that that person also did blah blah blah?" We, and we get a yeah. lot of feedback like that. Again, it's the two way street. We we do a thing, and then people watch, and then we see their response, and then it will cause us to react and you know appease them to try to keep giving them the content they want to see, 
that fits what it is that we're trying to do in a very fun but yet documentary sort of style. How many yeah. episodes a season are you thinking? Um, yeah, we were we're looking at five to six or six this first season. If we can do more, great. But kind of we kind of looked at some other movies that made us toys that made us to kind of see what's a good season. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this one will be is all us. It's all us. You know, we're putting our blood, sweat and tears into it. Hopefully yeah. um, that was one thing I, I really wanted to do was like, you know, me and Phil just having fun conversations. How should we do it? What should we do? What are the episodes? Right. Um, and then, you know, hopefully once we get this out there, you know, maybe some a bigger company will pick it up so we can do even more and do it faster because it while it is going to be really fun to do it ourselves the way we want to do it. Um, that's a huge huge undertaking you know oh yeah oh yeah yes oh yeah yeah felt yeah felt yeah, yeah. <laughs> the passion's there right the passion's so much more earnest it's, in the beginning you're putting it's all our your... show why not <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean literally you're looking at i'm looking at all of you there and they're like who are you pre who are you preaching to me <laughs> we, we, got a, we got a big company making this podcast exactly it's not uh, yeah. us <laughs> but no that's yeah. more for the people who are listening uh, because uh if if somebody wants to support what would be the best way for them to do that? Yes. So right now uh, we have a crowdfund going on right now on a Kickstarter. And there's lots of cool perks. There's some where you can be a producer, some where you can, you know, get signed stuff, get DVDs, physical media. Um, we're going to do a theatrical premiere uh, at one point and you can get tickets to that. There's all sorts of cool stuff. So we have a Kickstarter right now. If you Google Game Changers Kickstarter, You'll find it, <laughs> uh, but also you can follow us on Instagram, Game Changers Series, if you, Game Changers Series. We're everywhere, but that's really what you can do. We really, we have to make this a success to be able to keep on doing this. And we want to do it because like Phil was saying, there's so many of these, so many people deserve to have their story told. And, and I, there's so many that I would love to watch and everyone else I know is the same way. I mean, you think about it, like, that game would be cool. That game would be cool. That game would be cool. That, you know, so we really want to make it a success. So please, if you can donate to our Kickstarter again, just search game changers, Kickstarter, you'll find it or follow us game changers series on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, uh, gamechangerseries.com you'll see all of our links um, but yeah and if you know if there's you know I understand money can be tight then just share it with people you know get it everywhere you can if you have a rich uncle show it to him you know because that is one thing that's pretty cool we did that with the orange years where there's a certain tier where you can be a producer and I know a lot of those people you know that one of them is like a orthodontist you know he's like yeah, I'm a movie producer. You know, <laughs> you know you to get to say, and hey, get to say you're a movie, you you produce something with Phil Moore. I mean, hey, that's uh, that's not that's that's not so bad. You know, and you'll get <laughs> and you'll get braces too, so it works out for everybody. Yeah, there we go. You know, <laughs> with two we really need some braces, Phil Moore. Boom, we can make up. You know, and, listen, and, I, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna borrow a line. There's a podcast that I that I listen to from a couple of uh, Aussie dudes, uh, and they always go listen. Money can be tight, things can be hard, but like, if everybody who's hearing us, just as they say, I'm stealing, here's what I'm stealing, chucking a buck. I mean, like, we, <laughs> we need more than that. But can you imagine if like, you know, 10,000 people got wind of this and, and all the all they could do was a, a dollar? Well, that's 10 grand, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. What we want to do is, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be big math. It just has to be something. And, and it's the accumulate, it's the arithmetic of the math that um, will help make this happen. Uh, I, I am, um, uh, got to just say in front of everybody how incredibly uh, uh, just happy that I am that, that Scott Barber gave me this call, uh, asked me about this. Uh, I am a professional game show producer. I am a host, but I, I have not gotten giddy about anything uh, as I did when he said, step into the Del DeLorean, McFly, let's go back <laughs> to the future. And I was like, uh, and so I will be working in conjunction with him. Uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed with, again, what he did with the orange years. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to put my toe in that at all. I'm going to let him do his thing. And then I'm going to make sure that the, the, the interview skills that I have as a host uh, bring out the stories that you want to hear and that'll be compelling and get you coming back for more. And I've said it 
when we got to have the opportunity to interview Scott previously, the Orange Years documentary is the documentary that I keep hearing about the most within the 90s Nickelodeon circuit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Scott just shared his uh, Kickstarter or uh, crowdfund uh, video on the uh, Facebook page that I am an admin for. And uh, every once in a while on that very one, I'll have so many people just every few weeks Hey, have you guys heard about this documentary, The Orange Years? It's like, dude, this thing's been yeah. out for a few years it's, by now. It's yeah. still a Nickelodeon it. documentary. Yeah. And, I mean, and, is, and it's an people, accomplishment. If if you guys enjoyed, you feel you slimesters, if you're listening, if you've seen this documentary and you enjoyed it, you know the quality of work that you're getting. And also the fact that if you're at all nostalgic, which you are, you're listening to this show. I know you're nostalgic. I know you played games. I know you guys are probably getting giddy about this too, because I know we are, and and it's hard. I'm I'm not gonna lie. It's really really hard not to get giddy when Phil Moore gets giddy. And so, my inner child's it, doing a happy dance right now. So, so all the uh, all the links and things that uh, Scott was talking about, we'll have it down in the description below. So go follow, support, share. Uh, if you can chuck a buck as was said earlier <laughs> if you can do more please do more uh it, it's passion and drive and enthusiasm is one thing but you you need some really strong supporters financial supporters to make sure that it gets done uh speaking from experience so please support these guys um uh, as for my the rest of my crew do any of you have any other questions I'm just going to say, yeah, definitely go ch check out as much as you can, share it with whoever you can. Um, like they said, you know, chuck a buck or tell a fellow or do whatever you can to <laughs> you chuck know, a buck, spread Mike. the word. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, I what? definitely know I'll be checking it out and sharing it out uh, from my end. But um, yeah, I just, I I'm mean, so excited to see these stories because mm -hmm. it is an interesting perspective to go from one game at a time, giving each game its due diligence and its own thing, not bundling everything together to where something's just being passed over. So I'm really excited for this. And, and this is like, is. this is like every game too. So I'm really excited to check this out. Um, I, I recently told the crew earlier, sorry, I'm not a gamer, but I do like documentaries. And the one that really interests me the most when I was a kid was the whole Mario 2 scandal, where it's yeah. like, oh, this is the mm -hmm. Japanese game. I loved hearing this stuff. So seeing a show mm -hmm. about this, that has my interest for sure. So I can't wait to see a full series of this. And so, and I have a very, absolutely. very, I have a very important question. Team Mario or Team Sonic? <laughs> Yes. Not gonna hurt my feelings because obviously, <laughs> is there obviously, a wrong answer? Or? There is no wrong answer because so, they're both hey, awesome. Are we, are we going across uh, across the, the the panel here, or uh, are you just go, go ahead, to Scott and I? Go Please ahead, go. we'll do everybody. Uh, Team Mario. All right. I I I would say. What are you gonna say, mm -hmm. Phil? Uh. I, I, I was going to say, uh, I got to go Team Mario. Team Mario. Because Mario started, let's, let's, let's get to what we're talking about. <laughs> Mario <laughs> was with Donkey Kong when it was on the freaking Atari ColecoVision and you turned the stupid dog. <laughs> what about Rob the Robot? What about him? <laughs> what about Rob? <laughs> the Robot. I'll bring my I'll bring my granddaughter in there. She's gonna look at Rob the Robot and go, "Who the hell is that?" But she knows Mario. Yeah. <laughs> this is the preview. Of <laughs> uh, Scott, Mario, or Sonic? So I would have to say Team Luigi. So by default, mm -hmm. that's Mario. I think every I, I was the little brother, so I think every yes. single little brother out there. Can yes. understand Luigi, oh, Luigi is your guy because you always have to be Luigi because yep. you're always player two. Yep. I thought that was kind of cool how Luigi is the younger brother and every younger brother has to play <laughs> as Luigi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always oh. did too. I got so ticked off at Paper Mario when Luigi and Mario were there and I was like, yeah, they're both together. No, Luigi, stay back. What are they doing what? that for? <laughs> So exactly. I was so mad whenever my mom gave me Mario is missing. Uh, to play because I finally get to be one player and then 
I'm Luigi the whole game. The whole game. Again. <laughs> what kind of cruel joke is this? Jordy, Mario Sonic. Hello. I'm going to have to go Mario because Mario has so much outside of just the game, the periphery stuff. I love the super, the, the show. Uh, I love the animated yes. show. I love the, the live action portions. Mario! Um, Mario 64 is such a game changer. Um, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Can I say so something Mario. about that? Yes. With, you know, Mario, the Mario movie did such a good job of all the Easter eggs. You know, they had Charles Martinet oh, yes. in there. Yeah. Yeah, everybody wanted mm-hmm. Charles. At first, everyone was mad it wasn't Charles Martinet. <laughs> and then they gave him. How co- Here's another reason why I got to do Team Mario. How come Sonic did not have Jaleel White in there somewhere? <laughs> Jaleel White has done yes. the voice yes. of Sonic on so many different things. Come on, you could have put him as a, some respect. So something, some respect. something. something, you something. Know? He could have been he, he could have been like working in the in the police department with the other human characters. Something, <laughs> something. Come on, it's like exactly. the Chippendales movie that had everybody in there. If anyone's ever seen that one, yeah, yeah that's a good yeah, one. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've I've not seen Strippers the movie. I, I've not <laughs> seen it's on Disney Plus. Trust me, they oh, do wow. some great dancing. Yeah, yeah, everything <laughs> below the waist. Chippendales <laughs> with with Chris Farley and Patrick. <laughs> Everybody's working for the weekend. So, yeah. <laughs> They're doing the one with Chris Helmsworth called Super Mario Stripper, but that's. A whole nother movie. That's a different guy. <laughs> it's a whole different movie. Oh, quick question, you guys. What did you guys think of the Mario Brothers live action movie? The 1993 one with uh, yeah. Bob Hoskins. Bob Hoskins. Do we have to dignify? <laughs> That's right up there with the Star Wars holiday special. I'm not even going to answer that, man. No, no, I feel like it's we, life day. No. Oh, we had this conversation. <laughs> 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 it's so great. We're rehashing it. I think that that oh. one would be a good documentary about that movie because it's it's so cursed how it happened. You know, like, mm-hmm. how did we get here? There's like a bunch of things that went wrong to oh, make yeah. that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And somebody had put a Kickstarter up. This was before the pandemic that they were doing it, but then it never came out. So. Maybe I'll hit those people up uh, and see if uh, if it ne- never ever happened. One quick thing, though, you're talking about the holiday special. Here's a little bit of a deep dive. If you got that's something that's even closer to the holiday special, Google Mario ice capades. The Mario ice capades. That a lot of people don't oh know about. Gosh. Mr. Belvedere is Bowser. It's <laughs> what? It's, Mr. It's Belvedere. Like, Mr. Belvedere. It is on par with the holiday special. It is like <laughs> wow, crazy. It's Super insane. Mario ice capades. Yeah, look up Mario Brothers uh, ice capades. It's insane. Wow. I'm gonna check that out. Wow. <laughs> Everybody watching this, check that out too. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I'm I'm Team Mario as well. I mean, it was one of my earliest memories. Mario Brothers Three was my first game yes. I've ever played, so I it was fantastic. I loved it. Wait, Jason Bateman and Alyssa Milano. That's it. That's it. Oh my <laughs> Jason <laughs> Bateman. The whole thing is like they get I forget what it is. Something goes wrong with their computer, and Bowser's trying to make like a computer virus in it's it's bonkers like none of it makes sense at all i need to watch this <laughs> you guys do oh. everybody needs to watch that absolutely I think, I think you i think you just filled out saturday night there scott now we know what doing. <laughs> everybody let's get on the phone call dominoes and get ready for a night of grace. Yes. <laughs> Let's tag Scott B. Yeah, yeah there please. we go. This is a great, great movie. Great TV show. <laughs> All right. Well, that is, I think that'll be it for this episode. Uh, again, a big thank you to both Scott and Phil. Yes. Uh, Seriously, please, thank you. Please go support, show some love. Uh, let's get this kickstarted so we can <laughs> hear about some game changers. So, again, thank you both so much. It's a pleasure being here. Thanks again for having us. Oh, it's been a great time. Right. Thank you. We'll see you guys very soon. We'll spot you later. Spot you later. (laughs) And he told me a story about him and Teddy Ruxpin.
<laughs> I, I told him about Megan and her disdain for it, and he thought that was hilarious. Megan very, very much wants Kevin to come see her show, which means a lot to him. Yeah. So he said, I will be there. And then he bought a ticket for himself and a ticket for a guest. <laughs> Let's see where this is going. <laughs> Who was the guest? Teddy. 